I'd now like to welcome Aidan. Thank you very much. Beneath the high ceilings of the Institute, <laughs> a measurable volume of air that would encompass the atmosphere of several homes of those who gather here, glad of the knowledge, the company, or just a cleaner lungful. The light fades in the room as the speaker rises, high windows dimming with evening sky. The gas lamps are lit and flare with coal gas from the works below. Listeners spit, dottle, and smoke. Outcropping of ore, coal, iron, limestone and clay brought us here to work the seams, the treadles and mills, compounding and blasting, smouldering and smelting. Fresh from the waterway, washing hangs out to dry, boats on the ooze feel for the breeze, tugging at the wharves and staves, the maid of all work at the work's owner's daughter's stays. As a perfect girder, curved to exact tension is a is applied to the span transecting the river. Horses work the incline, elevating and transporting brick, timber, china clay, coke, lime and forged ingots still ticking from the foundry. Barges bear away fine artefacts, axles for mill wheels, tiles for the parsonage. While here on the valley side, steep where the stream carved open the valuable strata, we institute another outlook, draw clearer breath and take the owner and the preacher, the buyer and the banker, to task. What comes from the earth to re-enter the earth is a quantifiable volume. Lifts that appear to stand freely on the surface must be socketed securely in stone foundations, the joints carved out with care to a perfect lasting fit by hands armed with stone chisel, axe and rasp. Stone upon stone the blows resound, from quarry face to ceremonial site, echoing the voices of men, women and their children at work on the structures that shape their years, hard by their homes and the fringy lake, mark-making on the land of their living. Glyphs hand-carved in diamond hard, cutting edge of mason's craft, makes long and short work of it, mnemonic to a God-fearing man, orate pro nobis. Who's paid to chant for the best rest of his soul? Who takes a chance on the mineral rights of this man's estate? The legends are worked out, remnants left exposed to decay under a bleak sky. Our origin myths not set in stone, but shifting subtly in emphasis and tone from generation to regeneration, settling encrusted with efflorescence of ore, marks in the weathering scratching the surface. Certain measures must be taken, samples cored and fossils passed up the line in our father's ancestral dwellings, portraiture and paradox, sentiments filigreed in oxide, a ringing as on iron, low ceilings and high sacraments, bent backs and worn fingers picking at the seams, the slow recovery of knowledge. Thank you. That was um, a ritual landscape. This is beyond imagining. Powerful winds blow over the tundra zone, eroding the ungrassed soil, a personal bonfire of dangerous papers. Infinity is not a metaphor, disaster never simply disaster. Windborne deposits building to sculpted structures. The future may always be terrible. The mind, its own palimpsest, cannot be held to a single place. All that exists deserves to perish. Modern primitive peoples make casual use of a great variety of materials, from shell and shark's teeth to bottle glass and telegraph insulators. I have the sorry desire to be happy, harnessing Jovian satellites in the service of navigation, uncertainty as a revolutionary creed. The retreat of a glacier does not imply backward movement of the ice itself. Failure is unavoidable. What matters is what explodes and spills, what erupts, 
How can you possibly believe that a revolution can or should be mastered or known in advance? If you are in touch with those parts of the mind which the mind itself cannot master, freedom is always the freedom to think otherwise. Dark spots creep continuously across the surface of the sun, the past an artefact, blank time before one's birth. With the return of warm climate, the river revives enough to resume erosion in the normal way. This method of time measurement has not yet been widely applied, but it promises much. A perilous path between heaven revered and heavens revealed through a telescope unravelling as a challenge to human intelligence. People of the insulator culture seek ways to monetize their artefacts, the middle finger of Galileo's right hand encased in a gilded glass egg. <coughs> um, you may see that what I'm reading from is my spangly new book from Shearsman, Uncertain Measures, which is... <laughs> which is um, for sale at the back if anybody wants it, and if, they, if you run out, I've got more copies. <laughs> um, um, this um, is a poem about hell, um, which for no particular reason, other I suppose than the same reason that um, Pansy gave yesterday for naming one of her poems Helsinki, it's not because I like the title, it's the subversive nature of toys. The future carries with it the archaic. A faint glimpse of light from a faraway galaxy, the intrinsic energy of empty space. What is important is the mean of the data. Variable equation of state quintessence, the fascination that issues from the flayer's zone, sweet, sticky odour of putrefaction, the corpse so palpable in its morbidity. I dug a lake and planted trees, curves fitting to the theory of errors, a dusty place where even priests and kings lie in darkness, clad like birds in coats of feathers, blasphemers hang by their tongues, adulterers by their genitals, eternity as a state of constant nostalgia. Punishment of the wicked is a reversal of the natural order. The actual or accurate value of a physical quality, such as length, time interval or temperature cannot be found. Measuring devices may be faulty in various ways. The dead watch us, a democracy of ghosts, the unclasped spirit of Patroclus like a vapour gone beneath the earth, gibbering faintly. Such errors follow no simple law and in general arise from many causes. Nothing immaterial has freed itself from mysterious connection to the meat. Heaven's existence is dependent on its impossibility. God laughs at the punishment of sinners, predestined, condemned by his own will and the lack of theirs, an ordinary sin set, forgivable fallibilities. The damned writhing below in chaotic torture, their great numbers confining the victims in unbearable stench of flames that give no light. Cataclysmic explosions from self-destructive stars. I ferried him who had no boat no measures of dispersion. Systematic errors may arise from the observer or the instrument. Death and its rituals of decay are noises off, the only worth to be assigned to the corpse, its breakup value. The calculus of risk, a pragmatic assessment of interest. The mean frequency is usually not of particular significance. And I've lost my... There we go. Um, <clears throat> finally, a little reference, there's a lot in this book about um, the Cold War in one way or another. Um, this is just post Second World War, Eastern Europe, probably Poland, could be anywhere really, in Eastern Europe. Clear the rubble, rebuild. Because for the moment there is no cinema, a golden opportunity is before us. Clearing the ruins won't do it, it's not pleasurable enough. We must find the language to reach people who are working hard. The industrialist, with his briefcase, extends a hand to the glowing smile of the countryman, cradling a sheaf of corn on the ministry's ceramic facade, the power lines whisked into perspectival distance. The urban human sunbathes on the balcony of his light, modern, airy apartment, leads a sober existence, a few sad love affairs, and a life spent rehearsing those little adulteries of its youth. We must have music and entertainment, 
yet form without content means nothing. A poet who cooperates may be allowed some difficult figures of speech. The urban human lies on a practical sofa and does not use the bathtub for his animals. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, David. <laughs>